Hey everyone, it's been a while. This week I've been working on another isometric scene, but this one in a forest. Vegetation is a pretty tricky thing to nail on pixel art and something I haven't paid too much attention to so far, so this was quite challenging. I started by loosely sketching what I wanted to draw on top of an isometric grid. I really can't overstate how useful that was. My first attempts were way too small and took me a while to figure out how to fill in the scene with detail. It doesn't need to look good, in fact this really doesn't look that great, but it really helps figuring out the layout of the space you're going to be drawing, and if you need to make any major change, it doesn't take that long. Once I got that down, I moved on to a sprites and cleaned it all up. What I'm working on right now is inspired from an actual place I found while walking around in villages close to where I live. I've no idea what it was, but I found a small pond with a stone wall behind and some vegetation around the place. It doesn't look that great in the video because the weather was kind of shit, but you get the idea. It reminded me of some locations in games like the Mystical Spring in Dragon Quest VIII or the Fairy Ponds in Zelda games, kind of a place where you would heal up by drinking from the magic pond. I added a little shrine there to the right to hopefully help conveying that this is a place where you can heal up. Moving on to the colouring now, I had a small colour color palette ready just to have something going, but it changed quite a bit as I went on. Index painting makes this kind of workflow a lot easier. If you're not familiar, um, a sprite allows you to paint with indices rather than directly paint with RGB values, and each index has its own colour. The nice thing is that if you want to change part of your palette, you can just change it up there, and everything else on the canvas will change along with it. It makes color, color changes on the whole thing a lot easier, and it sort of for forces you to keep a fairly small color palette. It's pretty cool. You can see here, I'm trying to figure out a palette for the ground. It was pretty tricky to get right because the whole scene is already green and brown and brown on brown isn't the most glamorous thing, there's not going to be much contrast, it's going to look muddy. I ended up going for a very dark, desaturated reddish purple, and with how much hue shifting I use in my other ramps, it still registers as brown and contrasts pretty nicely with the trees. I added detail by layers, uh, first focusing on just adding shadows to the entire scene just to give a sense of the shape of the object, and only when that was done did I move on to adding textures. One thing I should mention is that I drew all of this during a couple of live streams. I've been streaming on Twitch fairly regularly lately, and I've been having a pretty good time. I mostly stream in French, but if you want to come in and chat in English, I'd be more than happy to. If that sounds interesting to you, that'll be a link in the description. For the stone wall here, obviously I didn't want to leave it as a monolith, but also there's a balance to be found between that and adding so much detail that it becomes the only thing you see. So one trick that I did here and that I think works okay is that along the top of the wall the rocks are pretty small and pretty heavily detailed, and then the more you go down the bigger the rocks get. Now that makes sense from a building perspective because obviously you want to put the sturdier rocks at the bottom, but also it helps make sure that the, there's only detail where people are going to look. The top of the wall is obviously what's going to get the most attention because you can actually see the top of the rocks. The bottom of the wall is not going to get that much attention though. Reducing the detail there, it helps keep the frame a little bit more legible. Giving the water the right look was a bit of a struggle. 
Around the edges of the water, I continued the walls and the little shrine into the ponds, but in much darker colours and much less detail to give a sense that you can see through the water, to give a sense of transparency. The problem then was that the water blended too much into the wall and you couldn't really make out where the water started. So I, I added a bit of foam all around to delineate the lake a little bit better. This should be pretty fun to animate down the line too. For the leaves in the corner of the screen, I didn't want them to take up too much attention, so the important bit for me was that they would fade out to the darkest colour in the scene. Alright, so moving on to adding detail and texture now. I'm still struggling a fair bit with that, so I'm not sure how much advice I should give, but there's one video by Adam C. Yonis that's always been super useful to me, where he reviews the work of a, of a subscriber of his. A link in doubt below, but the gist is that you should only add detail in the space between two different light levels. This helps dithering the light to some extent, and it gives enough info about the texture of the surface in question to imply it elsewhere. I tried my best to do that here with the bark, but I still feel like I went a little bit overboard. The leaves were pretty interesting to work on, because there are two very different scales here. The bushes needed detail that were pretty small, and for consistency I thought I should make the leaves in the corner the same size. That ended up being a bit of a nightmare to work on, and it didn't look that great, so I had to enlarge them quite a bit. This is one of those cases where doing this on stream, where people could give me feedback as I went on, was super useful. Right, so this is getting pretty close to done, so I'm going to wrap up the time lapse here just to leave the animation as a surprise for the end. There's one thing I wish I could have done for this piece is that right next to the pond there was an old, not abandoned, but run down agricultural cooperative, and this mix of industry and overgrowth is 100% my jam. I haven't found a way to work it in in, these, in this piece, but I'll have to try out something in that style sometime. It might be for next time, I, I don't know, no promises though, I haven't been very good at making stuff for these last few months. Still, I hope you enjoyed, here's the recap and the animation, thanks for watching, I'll see you soon.